Hello, hello. Um, good evening, good evening, guys, and welcome. So, um, the first thing that I wanted to do is that I wanted to request one minute from you guys. I know that it's uh, you know, it's it's not the best thing that I should be doing right now, but I want to go ahead and grab some water. So I'll be back in just a bit. Uh, because yeah, I'm coming from a class and I need you know to refresh my throat. So I'll be back in a minute. Y el profe se va y nos deja solo por media hora. All right, no, I'm back. Here I am. So, um, good evening. Here we are, ready to get started on the second last class once again um, for, you know, another module. Now, I have a question that is be, has been bugging me a lot. And uh, you guys are probably the only ones who can, you know, help me in terms of a students, of course. Of course, help me find an answer to it. Because, yeah, I want to know, how many levels are left on your progress? Like, how many more modules do you guys have to take until you finish the, the full course? Um, is it two, or how many more levels do you guys have to have to go through? Do you know, Luis, how many more levels do you have? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Uh... I think this is the the previous one level to finish the all the course. So, so the, sec the second the, lab is the advanced two. The uh -huh. next one is the advanced three. And yeah, that would be the after, last one. After that, only uh, to continue with the the TOEFL test, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But the, the program, I think the program finished in next level. Oh, cool. Next level. Very good. And are you guys planning to take the TOEFL? Are you, are you Luis, planning to take the TOEFL? No, not yet. I need to okay. practice and, and, and more and more to, to get the, the test. I think okay. maybe, when, I don't know if I can do it with uh, in La Corporativo. I don't know yet. But no. No, the TOEFL is only with um the I forgot it in Spanish. No, the in English, sorry. Is it uh C C S A. Yeah, C C S A. El Centro Cultural Salvadoreño Americano. That's the only the only um office in El Salvador like authorized to you know to do the TOEFL test. Okay, but but, but then after that the level three. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a new course to prepare to to the For, TOEFL. I oh think. yes, yes, that is that is a positive. Yes, you can continue, you know, on the preparation. Yeah, with corporativo. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that you can do. Hey, maybe uh, I have uh, the look have, to to continue with them. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I have never actually taught, you know, TOEFL. I don't know if corporativo knows my score. Because at least in what I know, I have the highest score here in in um in the you know the eastern side. Because yeah, the test is really tough. I have to tell you, it's very very difficult. Uh, but I was lucky, or I have been lucky, because in my case, the first time that I took it, I got six hundred and thirty three points. Um, and the next time, which was like five months ago. I got um six hundred and seventy, no six hundred and sixty seven points. Yeah, six hundred and sixty seven points. Because I was very close from like you know from the top score. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very tough test, and uh, it helps you a lot when it comes to like um applying for jobs or to study abroad. But apart from that, I don't think it's like really helpful. You know, here in the country, it's not that that important. Only of course if you are a teacher. Uh, then you're gonna need it. But if you're not a teacher, um, it's nice just to know like how high you are in like the learning process. But it's not that that important. Okay. But for tonight, just okay. Uh, okay. Now that we have more people, 
I have to tell you, um, we're not going to do anything crazy. I know you guys are a little bit stressed from yesterday. I, I assume that you are because, yeah, yesterday was was quite a ride. Um, tonight, I want us to do talking. OK, I, I want to, like, ask you things and, you know, have like conversations. Um, if you want, of course, we can go ahead and, and check on the um, on the subordinate any conjunctions that I have because we still have a long list to go. Um, so yeah, we can do that and we can do some reading because I want to like, you know, relax a little bit tonight, but I have something that, um, I was meaning to ask, did I ever ask this question to you guys before? What would you do if you won the lottery? Did I ask that question? Did I ask you that before? Do you have memories of that, Lorena? Mm, maybe no, because maybe that you have to answer with conditionals and i don't remember <laughs> that, i know that <laughs> that's great uh, someone yeah. has been paying attention i have studied that yeah. yeah someone has been paying attention yeah so i i don't know it's just not you know it's just something that just to let the mind like flow for a bit um that's a question that i feel like you know it's like kind of creative we can get as creative creative as we can um so tonight that's one of the questions that i have Another one is try to remember, okay, try to remember this. I want to know what has been the hardest word that you remembered that it was uh, like the hardest one for you to, to learn in English. Like what word has given you more trouble to know how to say, to know how to spell, to know how to write? Like what is your hard or the hardest word that you have ever had to learn in English? If I have the chance, I can share mine. And um, the hardest word that I have ever faced is business. Um, when I was learning English, I was just making a, I don't know, a scramble of the word business. You know, I never knew, I never hit it on the spot when it came to like learning the word or like, I mean, writing the word, spelling the word. It was just hard for me to like um, know how to spell business and how life goes. Because the first course that I had to teach at the university was actually English applied for business. So it was like, you know, how life is. And uh, yeah, on that course, I remember that on my first weeks, I made uh, the mistake of misspelling business three times. And I was like, oh. I mean, when I was like at the at the actual class, I would notice, you know, that I had misspelled it. And I was like, oh, my God, it's still there. Now I feel like I'm, I'm I'm safe, you know, I'm I'm better at it and I know how to spell business. I know how to write business. Uh, what I have troubles with sometimes is uh, with saying businesses that sometimes comes as a, uh, you know, as a as a hard one. But yeah, business, it's it's tricky. So try to remember your experience with the hardest word. But first, let's go with uh, what would you do if you ever get the chance to win the lottery? If you. Oh, or if you ever won the lottery. I'm going to start by hearing from Imelda. In your case, Imelda, what would you do if you ever won the lottery? If I won the lottery, mm -hmm. um, maybe I start my, my business, my own business. Okay. And, um, yeah. Uh, what else? Um. Remodelar mi casa. How do you say? Remodel my house. It's easy. Remodel my oh, house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remodel my house and uh, buy a car. <laughs> All right. Very good. Great. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Good. Very good. Starting a business. Yeah, because because I I I the the business is because the the money is not for always, you know. So. I love that way of thinking. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna say anything because if I share my opinion right now, it, it's gonna be biased. So I don't want you guys to be biased. You know, I want you to be as as true as possible. Um. Now, how about in the case of um. Uh, Melanie, what would you do, Melanie, if you ever won the lottery? So, what would be you know the the things that you would do?
fantastic. Seems Melanie is not around. How about in the case of uh, Luis? How about you, Luis? What would you do if you ever won the lottery? Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Um, what would you do? What is like the, the, the ideas that you have of the things that you would do if you ever had a chance to win the lottery? <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> Okay, let's try to calm them but, down. But my my idea, uh, I always I I was I I'm thinking about this and the is I win the the lottery, uh, I will uh, buy uh, land, tierras, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I will I will I will build. Uh, houses and rent all right yes Very that's good. my idea and and all uh it's difficult to me to to sing and, and and spend this morning in a lot of things by by my family but i need to invert that yeah. amount to to get more money Amazing. I'm loving it. Amazing. Very good. Great. How about we get to hear from someone else? Uh, because I'm going to get excited. How about uh, Carlita? In your case, what would you do if you ever won the lottery? What would be your first ideas? Hi, teacher. Um, hey if I won the lottery, lottery, I would like to buy my own house. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not a big house is necessary, uh, but it's a beautiful house with a big, uh, I don't know how to say, um, parte trasera. Backyard. Uh, como patio. Backyard. Bar como, uh, okay. como los backyardigans eran los niños del patio trasero. So yeah, backyard. Yes, a, a back, uh, backyard uh, because I really love animals and I have uh, dogs and cats and 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 I want that they have their own space uh, to have fun okay. each other. And, and with the rest of the money, <laughs> I don't know, maybe um, I put my own business in something on something that I really like because uh, we have to be intelligent what uh, about what. Uh, we can, I don't know, um, we can do better mm -hmm. uh, to sell or to, to produce. And I don't know, I mean, you said, yeah, I think this is the most important because I really don't. Yes, I, it car is necessary, but I really don't uh, care if it's the last, it's a car of the last year or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Use okay. my own house with my uh, pets, and and I I have a job. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can do uh, money for myself, and that's all. All right, great, very good. So nice, you know. Thinking like that is what uh can help us improve when it comes to like having ideas. I mean, some people believe that. Um, you know, thinking of this sort of thing is not okay. And I don't see why, because in my perspective, it's more like a, like a sort of mental preparation, you know, you kind of get to like express your ideas or think better sometimes when you um, simply wonder about what could happen. So, yeah. And uh, what you say about having space, you know, for your pets and for yourself, it's great because yeah, having having always some room, I can tell you that in my case, I have a huge backyard, at least in my opinion, it's really, really big. Um, so and I love it. Back in the day, we used to have cattle, cattle, para que no se ganado. So yeah, we used to have cattle and our dog, for example, he runs as he as if he was a, a horse because he has so much space and whenever we like, you know, make him run. He goes crazy, and the patio or the um the backyard is very big, and he has obstacles. He has many things, 
So yeah, I can see how animals are happy, you know, when they have a lot of space. So yeah, well, um, something you have to consider is the the cleaning because it's it's if it's big, it's gonna be hard to clean. Esa es la única cosa que no me gusta del patio, tener que barrer todo lo que se barre. Pero de ahí, we're nice. Okay, um, how about Miss Garcia? In your case, what would you do uh, if you ever won the lottery? Hi. Hey there. Well, I think that if I had the chance to, buy, to, to win the lottery, I will buy a house and maybe I will create two business, mm -hmm. as Imelda said. One is a bit for food because everyone uh, loves the food. So it should be like a, with a different concept. But right now, I don't know what kind of concept what should I... Concept? Yeah, but different and the second business should be a kindergarten the mm -hmm. one that had a high level of education and that can help to kids with some scholarships and i think that's that's my dream all right, very good, you know, very nice way of thinking. And that's something that I have always said. People uh, always need food, you know. So having an idea of like starting a restaurant, I mean, in my case, I have some family, well, most of my family actually lives in the US. So some of them have asked us, uh, like if, you know, if we were to open a business, what sort of business will be like the best idea? And I always go, well. well ideas, right? Not pupuserias. I love pupusas, but I will not start one because I have my, you know, my pupusera and I will not treat on her because, yeah, she's the best. So, no, <laughs> I will not do a pupuseria. And uh, I have always thought of, like, as you said, having something different. Um, so, what I have thought for a long, long time is that in my region, we don't really have any, like, southern sort of food, you know, like um, South American food. And I know that people in the South, they make some amazing dishes. So I have always thought of that, you know, like doing something Southern or maybe something European, because that's another thing that we don't have. We only have pizzas when it comes to like, you know, having um, something European is pizzas and pastas. But apart from that, nothing else. Um, so I thought I, I think of that, you know, like preparing dishes that are from abroad. However, uh, I know that it's going to be bad, but um preparing it with the taste that people are used to here like not being as fancy because if you are i have seen some restaurants here that they just fall down because they try to be creative and people don't want creativity sometimes they just want to be tricked or uh, uh, that's what people around here do because we used to have an amazing restaurant they were making some really good food but i don't know people just um didn't come too often because they said that um the food was too spicy and they uh, when it came to like the mexican food and the rest of the food was uh lame they said so it's you know it's, it's weird but yeah i will try to adapt to the customers but i will always also think of like you know of a restaurant sort of thing but what you mentioned with the kindergarten is very interesting because parents always need you know like a space to like drop their kids and if we have learned anything from um, like education is like the first years of a kid are the most important ones when it comes to like creating or establishing connections in our brains and having people who understand that and having people who care about that will be amazing so that, you know, those people can help our kids develop skills and abilities that we as parents maybe couldn't because we're busy working or doing other sort of thing. And uh, yeah, if he was if he was a kindergarten dedicated to that, to like developing the kids' minds, it will be a hit, I think. So good, great ideas. Moving on, how about you, Lorena? What would you do if you ever um had the chance to win the lottery? Please, please don't say open a a pasteleria because there is one around here that is pasteleria Lorena. So please don't. Ah uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. If I won the lottery, I would, um, I would like to help 
my friends, my family. Uh, I would like to take care of my health completely. I am a very thick person <laughs> and I would like to, to go to the best places, go to the best doctors to be healthy mm -hmm. and to save money in the bank. I know in different places, maybe not at the bank because in that place you don't earn money, you lose money, mm -hmm. but there are some places that you can earn. Travel, I like to travel. I have been traveling a lot since all my life and I, I, I would like to continue doing that. All right, great. Sounds amazing, you know, like uh, taking care of yourself, taking care of the people you love and also, well, doing stuff that you want to do, like traveling. And I feel like traveling is always, you know, there, like it's always there. We have that thing that uh, we always want to discover, you know, more and see more. So, yeah, it's very understandable that we have that desire. Uh, now, moving on, how about we hear from Elizabeth? In your case, Elizabeth, what would you do if you ever had a chance to win the lottery? Hi. Hey there. Um, in my case, if I won the lottery, uh, I would buy a lot of counts for my dad <laughs> because he likes it then a lot. And I will be, uh, I will buy a big house because in this moment I'm living in a small apartment. Mm -hmm. And and I will invest in the business that will give me a profit sum or like import tiny things for example and or something like that mm -hmm. and also um i will like to create a technology project that good but uh <laughs> the first one i i must think of a big idea worth developing um just that all right very good yeah um the in the, the, the what you call it uh important thing is is what it's booming i would say it's booming nowadays because um yeah imports are you know very important uh, there are things that are very hard to get and people are getting access or are being exposed to like more products from around the world so that means that we have like you know that eager or that desire of getting more things um that we want to try so yeah the imports are like a, a good option on on like when it comes to like talking about a business and uh yeah the rest of the ideas like the technological project of course you know it's like uh we need some improvements we need well, tons of improvements when it comes to um, some um, platforms or stuff like that. So, of course, it will be amazing, you know, to invest on, on, on things that are going towards the future. So, great. And also, as you mentioned, you know, the house, I feel like for our generation, is one of the first things that we think of because uh, many of us, at least in my occasion, in my case, I don't feel like, you know, if it, if I don't move, if I don't go to like another country, I don't feel like I will have the chance of like making or, or buying my own house. Because as things are going, you know, house prices is, are just going crazy. And uh, yeah, I don't feel like we are ever going to. I mean, if we do, it's going to be with a lot of sacrifice. So most of the time, I don't necessarily think of like buying. I think more on like, you know, investing on things that in the long run provide you that is space but anyway that's just my perspective so um how about uh gabriela cortez if you gabriela ever uh won the lottery um what would you do good evening um i would like to um, invest in uh, buy a house for rent in in, a, in my personal uh, I would like to trip to Europe with my family alright great that's all 
great. I mean, always thinking about the family, you know, it's it's amazing because, uh, yeah, we, of course, need to, like, try to consider those around us, those who we love. So it seems like, you know, it's it's nice to hear when, when you guys consider um, helping the family. However, it is also great that I, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, the, the project or, like, the investing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like, uh better on like sorry better than simply just thinking on like i'm going to get the money and i'm going to give it to the family so investing first and then when i have more money i'm going to give it to the family because if not what's going to happen is that we're going to end the same you know if we just give away what we get it's like we all at the end we're going to be the same as we were before because yeah that's how we humans work sometimes well, um, how about Rosa? In your case, Rosa, have you ever thought of what would you do if you ever win the lottery? Okay, seems like uh, she's not around. How about then in the case of you, Leslie? What would you do if you ever got the chance to win the lottery? Okay. Um, if I won the lottery, I would like to move on to other place of the world and open my business stream. Uh, it would be a big bar with different types of beer and delicious food and good music. And obviously, Siddhartha. <laughs> and um, a great weather. So this, uh, it will be my dream. Okay. So when you mention all these details, all that comes to mind is Ireland. Have you ever considered Ireland as one of the options? I consider it uh, Sweden, uh, or Switzerland, but uh, Ireland is a good option. <laughs> yeah, Switzerland, come on. Yeah, when I, when I get married, I would like to have my honeymoon at Switzerland. The great thing is that my best friend is supposed to pay for it. So, you know, I don't have to worry about it. I will, but hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how, what she said. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, she works for Qatar Airways, so probably she has the money. Hopefully she has the money. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it sounds great. Sounds like, you know, uh, a great idea. Moving and starting a business. And all the people are going to be like, who's this weirdo who just came here and, you know, started um, her own business? But great. Okay. So now uh, moving on. We have heard about that. Now I want to move into the other question that I gave you guys. And it's what is the hardest word that you guys ever remember having to learn in English? Or what was the one that you struggled the most to pronounce correctly? Um, before getting into that, I wanted to, to ask you also if you guys, um, or if I have ever explained to you what's the meaning of the word evening or how the day is divided. Have I ever talked to you about that? About the different sections of the day or like what are the divisions of the hours during a day? Nope. Nope. Okay, so um, th that is something that I consider important because, of course, we need to know, uh, you know, why are we using the words that we're using? Uh, for example, <clears throat> when it comes to, um, to talking about the morning. So the morning is a time that corresponds from 5 a.m. to um, 11 a.m. or the last minute of 11 a.m. So that's easy, right? It's very easy. Another detail. You have to remember this. When you talk about hours that have daylight, we use the preposition in. So in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, okay? But when we have hours that do not have daylight, we <laughs> use the preposition at. For example, at night and at dawn. So those are the two main ones that do not have, um, that do not have uh, daylight. Now, other two prepositions that are important are the preposition at. When you talk about at, it means that um, you have to be somewhere by a very specific time. So for example, if you tell someone, see you at noon, that means that you're going to meet with this person exactly at that time. It means that you are, um, you know, 
on the responsibility of arriving there at that time. If, for example, you tell someone, I have an appointment at 1 p.m., it means that your appointment can no go longer than that time. In our case, um, I think that, you know, Latin Americans, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to throw hate on only Salvadorians because, because I feel like all Latin Americans are the same or we are the same. Um, we are very irresponsible when it comes to the time. I know that there are always people who are. I try to be one, but sometimes, you know, we just simply have that Latin American moment when we are not responsible when it comes to our time. But um, it's very hard for us to be places on time. However, we have that, you know, we have the word or the preposition at when it comes to being at places at a very specific time. We have another one, which is by. However, the difference between these two is that at means that you have to be there at that time, but it's not like you're going to you're going to be punished or you're going to have any consequences if you arrive there later than that time. But when you use the preposition by, by, of course, not the one that you use to say bye to people. Oh, that's a cute thingy. Okay. Uh, the preposition that I'm looking for here is the one that simply has a B and a Y. By that one. So that preposition is used when you're talking about being at a place at a specific time, but if you're not there at that time, then you are going to face consequences. So for example, if it's a doctor appointment, and if your doctor tells you, you have to be here by 2 p.m., if you're not there at 2 p.m., it means that you're going to lose the appointment, okay? You're going to miss the appointment, the doctor is not going to see you. Um, another very good option or very common option or very common example is with payments you know when you have to pay something like for example a bill or a test something like that um if you have to pay that by and i don't know uh in this case it's more about days nor hours but for example if you have to pay your water bill by the 10th of the month so if you don't pay it by the 10th of the month then you're going to be recharged a um a fee or you know, a fine. Sí, esa palabra que, que les he dicho o les dije al principio cuando nos conocimos que no me gustaba, ahí está. If you do not pay by the 10th of the month, you're going to get a fine. So it means, you know, that you're punished. So that's the difference. At is used when you are talking about something that you are kind of responsible of doing, but if you don't do it, it's not going to have any consequences. But by has consequences. Cuando ustedes utilizan esa preposición de by, es como que están obligados a hacerlo y si no lo hacen, entonces van a tener que sufrir consecuencias. Así que hay diferencias, ¿verdad? Entre utilizar el at y utilizar by. Bueno, seguimos con lo de la división del, uh, del día. Then we have noon. Noon is, of course, uh, between 12 and 1 p.m., okay Then we have afternoon, and that's, well, basically why. If you guys have ever wondered why we say afternoon and why the morning is kind of similar at least in the fact that it has an m at the beginning as mañana uh and afternoon doesn't have anything uh resembling tarde it's because well the word noon is the one that mandates you know the name for the next period of the day which is afternoon so we have the noon and then it's all the hours that come after that are going to be referred to as afternoon Now, the afternoon is a period of time that goes between 1 p.m. and um, 5 p.m., most likely, 1 and 5. That's going to be the afternoon. And then we have the beginning of the evening. Ahora, aquí sí voy a usar el español un poquito para hablarles acerca de algo que tiene que ver con esto. La situación del evening es que va eh, la noche, sí, por lo general, tiene un momento, o nosotros como humanos, ¿verdad? Que somos seres sociables. Tenemos un momento en el cual, por lo general, tratamos de tener como eso, ¿verdad? Relaciones sociales, o sea, estar con otras personas. Entonces, y es ahora, al menos en la cultura de donde proviene el inglés, se supone que será entre las 6 y las 10 de la noche. Y este es el tiempo que se va a conocer como el evening. Hay muchas, pero muchas cosas que suceden en estas horas, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, eh, la mayor 
cantidad de cenas, ¿verdad? Cuando las familias están juntas, o bueno, la cena literal en la casa, el ver tele, ver noticias, ver cualquier cosa con la familia, sucede principalmente durante esta hora. El hacer las tareas, cuando hacemos tareas, o sea, que los padres ayudan a los hijos a hacer tareas, es principalmente durante esta hora. Entonces, es una hora para ser sociables, para tener reuniones. So, after that, when you guys uh, have or pass the hour after 10 p.m., that's when you're supposed to go to bed. So, if you guys have ever noticed, whenever I come to the class, whenever I say hi, I always say good evening because it is still during this period of time when we are still, you know, living in this um um relationship sort of moment so having you know that the the closeness with other people now another thing another detail that is very important is one that has to do with restaurants and i remember this detail because of what leslie just mentioned uh one that has to do with restaurants and bars because um restaurants in the u.s are very different from what they are since 5 p.m to 9 30 to what they become after 10. Here, for example, if you go to a bar or if you go to, I don't know, a, a discotheque, they are open, I don't know, maybe since 8 p.m. probably. So, and it's open until 2, 2 a.m. So it's like, you know, the common thing from 8 to 2 and like there's no problem. But in the U.S., all these places, they are open because they are open before, uh, before 10 p.m. But they are not performing, let's say. What I mean by performing is that they're not playing any sort of music. They're not serving tons of like uh, alcoholic drinks. They are simply just regular restaurants. But after 10, when the moment for the family is over, for the friends is over, is when it all, you know, starts to change. So it's something that people are very respectful with or very respectful about, or at least in Minnesota. That's something I have to clarify as well. Al menos en Minnesota donde yo estuve, eso era así que antes de las 10 de la noche no servían mucho alcohol ni tampoco eh, ponían música alta en muchos lugares que o sea, eran dedicados a eso, ¿verdad? Era pasadas las 10 que ellos empezaban a hacer eso. Y por eso, de hecho, cuando yo llegué, recuerdo que la familia donde me quedé, ellos ya habían tenido como 5 años seguidos personas que habían ido de otros lados. Primero salvadoreño, pero 5 años seguidos ya ellos con españoles. Ellos me dijeron, cuando salgan, porque van a salir, y yo como, no, yo no, o sea, yo iba de aquí, que yo, pues iba a comprar tortillas, pero de ahí para allá nada va. Entonces, eh, ellos me dijeron, cuando salgan, porque van a salir, reúnanse aquí. Sí, esta casa va a ser su centro de reunión, y yo como, ¿qué? Entonces ellos me dijeron, sí, porque nosotros sabemos bien a qué horas es que pueden salir. Entonces ellos, eh, había, había habido un hijo mayor, digamos, en ese entonces él tenía 24 años, tenía apenas 21 eh, él era el encargado entonces, y esto era algo bien común, al menos en esa zona como les digo, ¿verdad? que pasaba el hecho de que todos los lugares así, todos los restaurantes los bares y eso, no estaba abierto antes de las 10 en el sentido de de molestar, digamos de, 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 del go out, todo lo del go out pasaba entre las 10 y las 2 entonces, son bastante respetuosos de eso, de la hora para la familia porque antes de, o sea, de esas horas, simplemente son muy dedicados a eso, ¿verdad? A, digamos, a la, a la hora de la familia. Porque esto del evening, principalmente es para esto, para la familia. So, just so you know, English has that detail, you know. It's that the evening is basically a time when you're supposed to share with the people that you, that you care about. Uh, and another thing is that... Um, When you arrive places, when you go to like um to like meetings, gatherings, um you can say good evening until 9:30. If it's past 9:30, it is way better if you say good night. Because if you arrive at a place that uh, past 9:30, it is closer from being the night than from being the evening. So that's you, you know, just as a recommendation. Um so if you go, you know, to a to a family meeting or a dinner and you arrive around eight, it's okay. You're safe. You can say good evening, no problem. If you arrive around nine, well, you may consider saying good night instead of good evening because the hour is about to be done. Um, but if you arrive around after 9.30, please don't say, you know, um, good evening because that's going to be kind of rude because, well, the evening is supposed to be enjoyed for 
a long time. And uh, that is also the reason why we have the New Year's Eve, the Christmas Eve, because those are also moments when you are supposed to be uh, sharing with people like family and friends. So yeah, those are, you know, that, or that's a detail that English has, as I said, that in my opinion, it's great because it like places the family in a very important place. And uh, from now on, when you say good evening, you're going to know that it's supposed to be a period, you know, when you are, well, supposed to be with the family. Y de ahora en adelante me dicen, ah, pues mañana no me conecto porque como todavía la clase es en el evening, ¿verdad? Voy a estar con la familia. No, that's just as a, an explanation. Well, so that's it. That's the detail that I had to share with you guys. Um, After that, as I said before, you know, when you go after 10, it's at. So it's like, for example, um, if you're saying 11, you're not going to say 11 in the night. It's 11 at night. Or if you say um, like two is not going to be two in the dawn, it's going to be two at dawn. All right. So two at dawn. All right. Um, so moving on. The question, what has been the hardest word that you guys have ever faced and that you um, were able to capitalize or able to learn? We are going to start by hearing from, from Luis. So Luis, in your case, What is the hardest word that you remember you were had to learn in English? If you want to tell a phrase, it's okay. But if it's only a word, you know, uh, we can share that. So what is the hardest word you remember that took you time or took you effort to, to learn? And how did you manage to do it? The hardest word. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe earn. Earn the make money. Uh huh. Earn. Earn. I I always uh, I was confusing with, with that word, so I I I confused it with another word uh, very similar the pronunciation. But uh, I I really uh, it was difficult to me to understand to understand the that meaning. The, the meaning of that verb so the the verb uh, win uh, gain uh -huh. uh, and air uh, all 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 of them uh, the meaning is very similar similar yeah yeah and, and the the ganar mm -hmm. and the but air es lo que me me confundía mm -hmm. I was confusing with that but yeah That I think that was one of, of the different words that I was uh, very difficult to me to in the pronunciation and the and the meaning also, but I can I can to say only that okay. <laughs> only that word for, for Great. this. <laughs> yeah, I mean earn. Yeah, in, in Spanish we only have a ganar. That's the difference. So that's a difficult thing because we say like cuánto ganas and. And that will be how much do you earn. Um, or if you talk about ganancias, you know, in Spanish it's still ganar, but in English it's profits. It's a different one. Or if you have, for example, oh, sí, ganó la competencia. That's he won. Um, or win. You know, it's a or win there. Uh, and what was the other one you mentioned? Uh, the gain. Oh, yeah, gain. Yeah, in the case of musculus. Uh -huh, in the case of like, yeah, gaining, for example, um, things in your body, you know, or gaining recognition. That's another one that you can just gain with. You know, when you start like being recognized, you gain recognition. So yeah, things that are like personal, that's a gain. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird because in Spanish we have only one word, but in English we have four words that are similar. Um, in or I mean not similar. But that we tend to confuse because in Spanish we only have one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great. So it's great that now you now know how what it means, uh, you know, to earn something. So very good. Already then. Um, how about uh, in the case of Gabriela Cortez? How about you? What has been the hardest word that you remember that you learned in English so far? The difference, the the uh, trick and trip. 
the the song is similar the trick track <laughs> what do you mean like which ones are the words because i i kind of heard the same thing gabriela sorry sorry yes what? uh mm -hmm. What are the two words? Uh, tri trick. Trick? Mm -hmm. what, what do they mean in Spanish? I remember like a, a truco, maybe. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh, I feel like I don't know. I don't know if we're talking about trick or treat. I think we are because that's so you know something that people get confused sometimes as well. Trick or treat. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's great that you now to you know have managed to um to learn the difference between the two. So yeah, very good. Well, uh, let's move on because that kind of got me confused. How about in your case, Imelda? What was the hardest word that you remember that took you some time to learn in English? Well, it's, it's not a war, but it's still harder to me. Um, the verb tenses. The verb tenses. That's my Everest. I. Mm -hmm, it's that. That's my Everest, and that because I, I can't uh, speak fluid, you know, and. Um, Actually, I have a an interview for a job, and mm -hmm. uh, I can uh, win the because they told me that 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 my conjugation is is wrong. Hmm. Okay. You no, know, because the the verb tenses is for is that I have to. Uh, improve mm -hmm. to practice like what are the the correct uh tenses that you need to use at uh, the specific uh sentences that you're pronouncing yeah yeah that's a, yeah, that's a tricky one because uh the problem is yes, mainly because uh-huh because i i i understand when when the people is talking and and when i i I read some something and but I can answer. And that's the hardest part because you need to like the, the the best thing we can do is basically to continue practicing because yeah that's that would be my advice you know and as, as I was gonna say the other thing that makes it very hard is that verbs are well there are the regular and irregular verbs and those are the ones that also make it very difficult you know to like remember every single verb how to conjugate each and every one of the forms that it has it's very tricky mostly mostly with irregular verbs because they all have like a like a different way of pronouncing and using them so yeah it's it's very tricky yeah because i i i think like that if i answers for um uh, a native English, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I, maybe sound like that. Yo uh, ser, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen the memes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, de hecho, esa persona que ella se le iba a decir que, o sea, que es el miedo. Tal vez no tanto, porque no es necesariamente así. O sea, no funciona así el inglés de que suene así de de de, de mal, digamos, como la lo que aparece en español o la burla que aparece en español, pero eh, pero sí, o sea, puede sonar como confuso. Hay personas que a veces se confunden, ¿verdad? Cuando utilizamos eh, la forma incorrecta de pronunciar y también la forma incorrecta en cuanto al estilo del verbo, al tiempo del verbo que teníamos que pronunciar. So yeah, it's tricky. And the best thing, as I said, the best thing we can do is just to continue practicing, you know, to like um, gather all the verbs and try to use them in sentences and, and remember like, okay, so when I'm trying to talk about uh, this sort of thing, I need to use the verb in this sort of tense. When I'm talking about this sort of thing, the verb goes in 
these other tens. Because if we don't do that, well, it's basically impossible. So yeah. Yes, well, because I I I mm -hmm. try to think in English too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> even I I um, aún ahí me 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 enredo todo. <laughs> but continue so. doing that. Continue. I know that it's hard, and it, y créame, o sea, pasa y va a pasar el tiempo y va a ser todavía complicado. Pero just continue. Keep on doing the thing. Because that's going to get you, you know, that's going to get your brain more prepared when it comes to speaking. The words are going to come to your mouth in a more fluent way than if you simply, you know, use it when you need to speak English. So, yeah, keep it in your brain. Keep it here because that's going to help you a lot. I promise you. So, OK. OK. Thank you. Good. You're very welcome. You're welcome. Um, how about Sandra? I'm sorry, Sandra, that I, I didn't ask you the previous question, the one about the lottery. Uh, but yeah, how about you, Sandra? What has been the hardest uh, word that you have had to learn so far? Sorry, teacher, but uh, I don't understand the question. Uh, ¿Cuál ha sido la palabra más difícil que se ha tenido que aprender usted hasta ahora? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Uh... <It's> okay. <laughs> if you want, we can come back to you later. No problem. Uh, it's... Yeah. Okay. So how about in the case of uh, Miss Garcia? How about you? What has been the hardest word that you think you have had to learn so far in English? Well, I still having problems to write it down. Is the word rhythm? Rhythm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rhythm. I see. Yeah. Uh, no rhythm. There we go. Is it like that? That word? Yep. Okay. That word. Yeah. I it... think it's to pronounce, but it, to write, I, I just forget the age the, the first age and i still know that it has an age at the first but i forget the old time well yeah i mean in my case i i have to say and this is gonna be a huge reference um but you know being able to write down this word rhythm basically prepared me for one of the hardest words that i have had to remember how to spell uh, which is the the name of the artist that I saw last Friday, which is Siddhartha. Um, actually, that day we were talking about that with people, you know, on the line. That his the spelling of that of the the name is tricky, and you guys like like have to pay attention to it to like get it right because yeah, the ages as they don't make a huge difference. Um, they do when it comes to the spelling, but yeah, rhythm. It's I mean. The pronunciation is weird, but the spelling is even weirder. But yeah, the word that I'm referring to, I'm sending it here in the chat as well. You know, that's, I mean, back in the day, I remember when I started to hear from the guy, I just simply will spell Siddhartha, you know, like regular. But now it's like, I know how to spell it and I do it right. I do it properly. Um, So yeah, but rhythm, that's a very, very tricky one. Yeah. And it's understandable, you know, it's it's a hard one. Uh okay. How about sorry? How about Lorena? In your case, Lorena, what has been one of the hardest words that you have had to learn so far in English? I think there are a lot of them, but Georgios is one that I have been trying to to, to pronounce correctly because uh like uh chocolate equals because if if many teachers teach them in a different way. And then mm -hmm. I have been like writing how pronouncing it. When I said to my husband, because he's, he's speaking English pretty well, he said, no, that's not correct. If I said to someone else, no, that's then I, I get confused. And I, I OK, I'm going to say chocolate. And it doesn't matter how the pronunciation correctly, no? Because you don't know. Chocolate. But yeah, chocolate is OK. I mean, I'm just adding to the pile, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but chocolate, yeah, chocolate is okay. I mean, I haven't heard 
the word chocolate so many times and I have never heard it pronounced, being pronounced differently. So yeah. I have another teacher and she always correct me and she said, no, Lorena, you have to say chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, it's <laughs> the same as me. It's like chocolate. Yeah. Like chocolate. chocolate. It's not chocolate. like chocolate. It's yeah. like, it's like well, chocolate. Chocolate. I don't know. I feel like chocolate <laughs> is better than you know, chocolate. Yeah, there's, I don't know. I mean, in my case, I have always said chocolate and I have never had, you know, any issues with it. But yeah, I mean, people are, are tricky sometimes, but chocolate. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Never heard of it like that, but. I will try to listen, you know, to my um, to my instructors to see <laughs> to, go, to go yeah to see how it pronounces it. In my case, I mean, I have never had any issues with it in chocolate. Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, but yeah, what was the first one you mentioned? Joyous. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. it's, it's like happy. Is it the, the synonym? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Joyous. Marvel. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I got I got it right because I was like, joyous is it, is the one that has to do with happy. So with happiness when you're en uh, enjoying thing something. Yeah, and to okay. answer people doing with that phrase, it is it's also I have in mind, but it doesn't. It's like no, the first word that it comes to my mind, no, mm -hmm. because it is not. I'm that not common. sure. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I prefer to say happy. Happy. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. I want to to change my word, but it's, I'm. I, I feel safe with the yeah. word. You better save it. You know, you're like, okay, now I'm gonna, gonna use this yeah. one today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's all right. Uh, okay, so yo use. Yeah, cool, cool, very good. All right. Um, how about in the case of Elizabeth? How about you, Elizabeth? What has been one of those words that has been tricky for you to learn um when it comes to talking about English? In my case, it was technology. Uh, I think I still cause me a bit. <laughs> After uh, no, before I say technologies in uh, because I don't know. Uh, in this moment I spelling and I in my pronunciation is improved by this word. It's yeah. Technology. technology. Uh, uh, se me pega la it used to be technology <laughs> for you then. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens, you know, in the, the word chronicles. I don't know if you guys know the word chronicles. I used to say chronicles. So, yeah, it's, it's similar, you know, chronicles, because um, the, the, the che sound was there. And so I was like, okay, it's a che. So I had to say chronicles, not chronicles. Uh, but then I learned that in English, you know, CH is basically just a C in Spanish. So I started to say chronicles because that's the proper way of saying it. And actually, the word technology nowadays is not like, you know, as commonly used as it was. Now people just simply, you know, shorten it to tech. Like most people just simply say tech. But yeah, technology. Okay, that, that's sort of like a tricky one, but tech, technology. All right, cool. How about um Leslie? In your case, what has been a word or phrase that you have found hard to pronounce in English or to to remember or to learn? Mm, for me, the hardest word maybe was jewelry, but no, but the meaning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, it's just that for the pronunciation, and it's funny because uh, it's a thing. Uh, that I always use uh, in my daily life, but uh, at the beginning it was difficult to pronounce it. I, I had problems with the word that comes before it. We watched jewels. I mean, it's, it's jewels, but I used to say jewels because that's how you spell it, you know, jewels, but uh, it's actually supposed to be jewels. Uh, but yeah, jewels, but jewelry, that's another thing. It's jewelry, jewelry. Casi como si estuviésemos diciendo eh, tu yo li, si, your li, your li. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those words, you know, that it's a little hard to pronounce. But yeah, as I said, back in the day, I used to say jewels instead of jewels that are, you know, the actual, um, the actual things. Uh, now, last but not least, we're going to hear from Carlita. How about you? What has been one of the hardest words that you have had to learn in English so far? 
Um, I teacher, there are two words that for me is confused uh, about the pronunciation because mm -hmm. if I hear that word, maybe I can uh, understand the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And the words are uh, beer and beer, like the oso and cerveza. Uh, I mean, uh, the pronunciation is uh, different, but I can, I can, so, sometimes I can think find the, the, the difference. But there is one, let me tell you, because beer, as you said it, is for cerveza, and the other one, uh, it's supposed to be bear, you know, bear. However, the, those two words have twins, because the word bear also can mean um, when you carry something, you know, as for example, if a, a, a document has like a stamp, you can use the word bear. Porque básicamente carga ese sello. So bear can also refer, be referred to cargar o portar. Uh, and the word beer has, you know, a similar in beard with a D at the end, which is la barba. So we have those two like sort of twins for the verse, for the words. But yeah, beer and bear. It will be a bit different there uh, because one is with a E and the other one sounds with a, um, I mean, sonido de E en español y el otro tiene sonido de E. Esa es la diferencia. Okay, but anyway, I have just um, taken two minutes from you guys. Uh, what we have to do now is simply close the, uh, the class, and uh, I have to thank you. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you for the participation you have had on this evening's class. So, yeah, let's hope that tomorrow, you know, we have another smooth one for closing the course. And um, so I hope I'll see you tomorrow, you know, for the end or for the last class of this course. And have a really good evening or rest of your evening. Uh, and yeah, see you next one.